Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley, the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. Uh, we've got a fun training for you today. Uh, it's using a tool called Google Trends, trends.google.com. Uh, we're going to use it to measure uh, how many uh, people were searching for uh, political candidates leading up to the 2020 election. So it allows you to answer questions like who has searched more, what was searched more uh, over a period of time. This database goes all the way back to 2004. It has minute by minute granularity and it's updated every three to five minutes. So it's a pretty fresh uh, data. There are 5.6 billion searches per day on Google. So the number that you'll see uh, reflected in the Y axis on our line charts uh, is, is a, a, a normalization. Um, so if you could open trends.google.com, uh, journalisttoolbox.org is another one to open. It's uh, got thousands of resources for reporters, editors, photojournalists, designers, and much more. Uh, it's a website that I've updated for the last quarter of a century. Uh, it has all kinds of free tools there uh, at no cost to you. Uh, so open up Google Trends, trends.google.com. Great little tool, trends.google.com. Google Trends, it's been around for a while. Um, Google developers have used it to improve their search algorithm uh, and uh, uh, used it internally for years. Uh, but then one day they decided to make it an outward facing database where you could go in and make queries to it uh, to track, use your own graphics to track, you know, who's being searched more, Taylor Swift or Kim Kardashian, you know, things like that. And they always have these little examples up here at the top. They're, they're kind of silly. They've been up there for a while. Uh, but then they get into some more serious stuff down lower on the page. And this is the elections page. I'm recording this actually the day before uh, the 2020 elections. You can kind of see what people are searching for, uh, uh, you know, uh, issues they're searching for. You know, uh, there's unemployment, uh, you know, obviously number one. Um, they have a coronavirus section. They also had one on Halloween uh, that they always do every year. A lot of people searching for pumpkin patches and not horror movies, which is probably a good thing. Um, down here, uh, these are uh, trend, recently trending topics. Um, everything from TV shows that are uh, debuting tonight to hurricanes, um, all kinds of different uh, things. Registering to vote, you know, it's the day before the election, Electoral College, election predictions has been up for most of the day as well. So you'll see a lot of pop culture in there, sports, uh, but also a lot of breaking news. All the action happens up here at the top. So this is where I can type in a keyword, and I'm going to go back in time to the 2016 election, see who has searched more, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. So <clears throat> we're looking for a search term here. Think of Hillary Clinton with quote marks around it. You do have to spell her name correctly because it doesn't account for misspellings. Uh, they also have subtopics here. Uh, Hillary Clinton is Secretary of State, uh, you know, First Lady, U.S. Senator. There's all kinds of different subtopics you can search for, but we're going to do the broad search term. Hillary Clinton. It defaults to US search. I can go worldwide US, state, or city um, over the past 12 months. And again, we can get it down to the last hour, last few minutes if we wanted to. Um, web search, I can do image search or Google News search, shopping or YouTube. You know, if you're doing uh, products, maybe uh, after the Super Bowl to see, you know, how uh, uh, searched, uh, which uh, brands were searched most often after the Super Bowl ads, Google Shopping might be a good place to go for that. This doesn't tell me much, you know, Hillary's kind of been out of the public limelight. I'm gonna type in Donald Trump. Again, you wanna compare search term to search term. And again, you know, he's president, she's, you know, dropped out of the public limelight. But when I click on past 12 months here, I'm gonna take it down to custom time range. I could go all the way from 2004 to present, but let's do the campaign year of 2016. And now we're getting somewhere because Donald's in red, she's in blue. She surpassed him in search uh, during the uh, early part of June, which is the FBI email investigation. July 24th was the Democratic National Convention. She also surpassed him September 11th when she passed out the 9-11 Memorial. Uh, don't guess at these dates either. You know, these were ones I went and looked up in Google News, uh, you know, her name and the date, uh, just so I could uh, track down the story that, you know, caused all this search. Um, I also can take it from the United States if I want to just look at the uh, Illinois or, you know, uh, maybe a city within Illinois if I just wanted to look at Chicago. 
And there we go, very similar results. She did uh, surpass them a couple other times down here. I also can add another layer into this and have a little fun with it. Pokemon Go, you guys might remember that game. It came out, a uh, little app came out uh, right after the 4th of July and led both of our Democratic, or both of our uh, presidential candidates uh, all the way up to uh, Labor Day um, in Google search, which is kind of a fun little comparison there. I like doing those fun little apples and oranges comparisons. It's really cool. Uh, you can embed these easily. It gives you a little JavaScript embed code there. Uh, you also can hop over here uh, to the share button and go to Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and just log in. Um, it also gives you some other selections down here, some little maps and related queries, you know, what context were they being searched in. Uh, you can take these and embed them as well um, individually, or you can link off to the whole area up here uh, with this link in the upper left hand corner of your browser window. Um, so what does this uh, Y axis mean over here, this 100? Um, think of this as a percentage. What you're seeing here is a normalization, okay? The peak search is right here. This is when Pokemon Go hit peak search. On election night, Donald was just over 50% of Pokemon Go's peak search in, you know, this is in Chicago. Uh, on election, uh, you know, election night's here and Pokemon Go's over here in July. Uh, Hillary was 34%, about a third of what Pokemon Go was when he debuted. And this isn't worldwide. Worldwide might make sense, but this is Chicago. Um, so you can test it out for your town doing this same thing and you can have, have a ball with this. Uh, to understand the y-axis, it explains it well under this question mark. Uh, sometimes reporters will actually put this language in their stories. Uh, a value of 100 is peak popularity for the term. A value of 50 means that term is half as popular. Um, so again, it's not 100 million or 100,000 over here uh, on the y-axis. It's actually a normalization, um, which is important to know. Um, that's uh, an important thing. All right. So let's fast forward in time. And let's see how we're doing in the current election. Type in Joe Biden. Search term again, do Donald Trump again. And this is over the past 12 months. You know, it's kind of crazy, like almost like an EKG. Uh, but you know, things have tightened up here a little bit. Let's look at it for the past 30 days, past month. This is US search. Donald was, you know, Leading out here in early October, you know, Biden has surged ahead a little bit in search here. Now, again, this isn't an indicator of who's going to win the election. This is just an indication of, you know, and we always attribute this to according to an analysis of Google search data. Uh, according to analysis of Google search data, you know, uh, Joe Biden uh, has surpassed Donald Trump in the last 10 days leading up to the election. You, know, you could write that with some, some accuracy there, um, uh, with a high level of accuracy, I should say. Um, but, you know, we, again, we can't, you know, uh, draw any conclusions because maybe he increased in search because of something controversial he said or, you know, whatever. Um, so that's a way to do it off of a more current topic. Um, it's also good for SEO. Um, I grew up in the great corners for state of Nebraska where football is everything. Um, and if you're writing a headline that and you decide on Husker football and you want to Decide, should I use porn huskers or huskers? Well, huskers is shorter, so that helps the headline. It's also searched about four times as often as corn huskers is. Um, so it's good for SEO. I mean, I'd use both these keywords uh, uh, for tags in this story. But if I was writing a headline, I'd go with huskers shorter. Uh, and the added bonus is it's searched a lot more too. So it's good for tracking SEO. Uh, again, use this tool throughout the pandemic to track certain issues, uh, the economy. Uh, there's a lot going on right now, uh, and this tool can be very valuable to you uh, to, to share that. Um, again, I wanted to remind you, visit journalisttoolbox.org. Um, we will uh, be posting new content there every single day uh, during the pandemic. Um, so do take advantage of that. Uh, and also uh, come back and visit us uh, here again on our YouTube channel. Uh, we put up new videos every Monday morning. Uh, we also have a newsletter that you can access off the right rail of journalisttoolbox.org. That newsletter comes out every other Tuesday morning. So thanks again, and we'll see you soon.